we're starting off with Raw, as the Judgment Day once again proved to be a highlight of this week's show. In an in-ring promo, Finn Balor delivered an amazing speech about insanity and waiting seven years to get payback on Seth Rollins, a nod to Seth injuring Balor during their SummerSlam 2016 encounter. It should come as no surprise that Dominic got booed mercilessly, and the villain recently confirmed his heelness, getting Viano tattooed on his neck. When Rhea Ripley called out Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, only Raquel came out, and the women's world champion was able to dispatch of her foe by attacking her already injured leg. Backstage, Adam Pearce disclosed that Raquel isn't cleared to wrestle, so it seems like the much-rumored match between the two at SummerSlam won't be happening. In the main event, it was Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio who took on Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins, with the World Heavyweight Champion subbing in for the injured Kevin Owens. Just as Priest thought he had the match won though, his attention turned to the Money in the Bank briefcase and it was clear that the Archer of Infamy was considering a cash-in. When Finn grabbed the briefcase, it appeared for a moment that the two were once again at odds, but Balor actually handed the case to Priest, encouraging him to cash in. Despite the efforts of both men, Priest was unable to cash in as Rollins attacked him before a title match was made official and was able to get the win for his team. This week's Raw served as another twist in Priest's Money in the Bank storyline, as Balor wanting him to cash in could be a sign that Finn sees him as an easier opponent than Rollins. If so, then WWE could be back on the road to splitting up the Judgment Day, or at least starting a slow burn that will lead to some conflict down the line. The big question now is whether Priest will attempt to cash in at SummerSlam, with many speculating that he could successfully cash in after Balor wins the gold. We'll just have to wait until this Saturday's event to know if that's going to happen, but do you think WWE are teasing conflict? And what did you make of the Judgment Day on Raw? Let us know down in the comments. It's been four and a half years since AEW was founded, and it's safe to say that the company has come a long way since January 1st, 2019. The story of AEW can't be told without including Cody Rhodes, and likewise, his story can't be told without AEW, but this week, Triple H had quite the comment about the All Elite promotion. During the American Nightmare documentary that premiered this week, Rhodes spoke about leaving AEW saying it wasn't because of money or because of other talent, but instead for a personal reason. Rhodes added that the byproduct of his exit meant he could go back to WWE and accomplish the biggest and first dream I ever had, that being the WWE title, which today is held by Roman Reigns. After this spot, the doc immediately cut to Triple H, who said that Cody didn't grow up being, quote, the champion or the face of a secondary promotion. Calling AEW a secondary promotion unsurprisingly caused a stir online, with some attacking the game for his disrespectful comment, while others said he was just talking facts. Cody is grateful for his time in AEW, but his focus now is becoming the top name in WWE. And what did you make of what Triple H said? Let us know in the comments. At NXT, Great American Bash, Gable Stevenson made his in-ring debut, and the match didn't exactly deliver to what fans expected. During one part, fans chanted, You're not Angle at the Olympian, with some fans cheering for Baron Corbin, and the double countout finish earned bullshit chants from the crowd. Clearly, this wasn't exactly what WWE had been hoping for, and now even Stevenson's own brother has mocked the finish of the bout. Taking to Twitter, NXT superstar Damon Kemp mocked the finish, saying that the Olympic gold medalist would have won with him as his trainer. Gable Stevenson signed with WWE two years ago, but his career has not gone anywhere like WWE had hoped. And what did you make of his first match? Sound off in the comments. When NXT Europe was announced last year, WWE closed down NXT UK and released the vast majority of names who were part of the show. One of the very few stars who remained with WWE was Aaliyah James, who competed a handful of times on NXT UK, but her time in WWE is now also over. On Twitter, James confirmed that she is free as a bird, signifying her release from WWE, and asked fans who they'd like to see her wrestle next. James did not give an explanation for her exit from WWE, but it's clear that the company had no plans for her as she hadn't competed on programming since a March 2022 taping of NXT UK. Outside of WWE, James has experience working with multiple promotions, including Rev Pro in the UK, and we'll just have to wait and see where the former NXT UK superstar goes next. When Lacey Evans recently returned to TV, she did so with a character that was based on her military background, as well as a nod to WWE Hall of Famer Sgt. Slaughter. 
Since then, though, Slaughter has taken issue multiple times about Evans, calling her character a disrespectful ripoff, and that WWE should have asked permission before going ahead with the idea. Now Slaughter has taken things to the next level, as he has filed a trademark for the Sergeant Slaughter name, as well as the phrase Cobra Clutch, the move Evans has been using since her return. If his trademark request is granted, then WWE may have to think of a new finisher for Evans, but with zero creative plans for her right now, it may be a while before we see her use any moves on TV. It's been three years since Dominic Mysterio made his in-ring debut for WWE, and unlike so many superstars, the reigning North American champion was able to skip NXT. Instead, Mysterio's first match was a high-profile bout with Seth Rollins at SummerSlam 2020, and the self-professed hardened criminal is very pleased that he was able to fast-track his career. In an interview with the Metro, Dominic Mysterio said he felt blessed to have skipped the developmental stage of his career and went straight to the main roster. He explained, I think there's definitely pros and cons to it, depending on how you look at it. I was blessed and very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in. I think just the way that I came about it and the people that I was surrounded with, I just don't think it made sense to go to NXT, especially with who I was going to learn from. You can't get any better than that. As for guys that I could be next to, I'm literally next to some of the best, if not the best, the current best, coming in with my first match against Seth and then carrying on to work with Baron Corbin and Sami Zayn during the pandemic to where once the pandemic was over, I started working with John Cena, Roman Reigns, The Usos, and Edge. It's ironic that Mysterio was able to skip NXT only to have become the NXT North American Champion, with his appearances alongside Rhea Ripley on the gold brand often getting the highest ratings. Dominic had an unconventional start in WWE, but one that's paid off for the Judgment Day member. And what have you made of Dominic since his debut? Sound off in the comments. We've got some sad news to report now as Paul Rubens, best known for his role as the manic Pee Wee Herman, has died at the age of 70. During the early 2010s, Rubens made several in-character appearances for WWE and would share the screen with The Miz in 2010 and even have a segment with The Rock at WrestleMania 27. Going back even further, Rubens was part of the 1985 All-Star Rock and Wrestling Saturdays Spectacular, where he worked with Roddy Piper, Hulk Hogan, and others, and we'd like to offer our condolences to his family at this time. During this year's WWE Draft, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn were called up from NXT to SmackDown, a move that confused fans given that they were the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions at the time. Since then, the only notable thing the pair has done is lose their titles, which have since been retired, so what exactly is happening with Fire and Dawn? When Ringside News asked about the pair, they were told that neither woman is high up on any totem pole, and that right now all focus is on SummerSlam. The silver lining is that the source in WWE said that there wasn't any example of WWE saying to hell with them, so the pair haven't been given up on yet. Both women have had success in NXT and NXT UK, but just like many superstars, the duo are struggling to make an impression on the main roster. Unsurprisingly, the pair are not booked for SummerSlam, nor are they expected to make a surprise appearance, and it remains to be seen what plans WWE has in their future. Last month, Nick Aldis' contract with Impact expired, and the British free agent is said to be somebody WWE is very interested in. Despite being an active wrestler though, WWE is considering all this for a role backstage as a producer, which many feel would be a waste of the former NWA World Champion. Speaking to Sportskeeda this week, Teddy Long echoed that sentiment, arguing that there's still money in all this and that he should be used on TV. More specifically, Long suggested Aldis to go to NXT and make his main roster debut by starting a feud with Cody Rhodes, a nod to their 2018 war over the NWA World title. Aldis is said to be interested in WWE, but has also shown interest in AEW. And where would you like to see the British wrestler go next? And we're ending today with Bray Wyatt, and before he vanished from WWE TV with an illness, it was rumored that a new Wyatt family was in the works. This week, a tenured member of the WWE creative team confirmed to Ringside News that a new family was the plan, with Mike Bennett, Alexa Bliss, and Bo Dallas being members. Reacting to reports that Eric Young was supposed to be a member, it was said that he was under consideration, but that WWE had been considering other plans for the Sanity alum. If WWE goes ahead with a family, it'll look much different, given that Young and Bennett are no longer in WWE, and Bliss will be out for some time with maternity leave. 
As we previously reported, Dallas is under the Uncle Howdy mask, but his own future with WWE is uncertain due to Wyatt's illness. And can Bray's return be salvaged, or is it just too late?